section fifteen of the american diary of a japanese girl this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the american diary of a japanese girl by yoni noguchi in america part thirteen seventeenth squirrel what admirable eyes he projected his head from a hole by my window he withdrew it a bit and bent it to one side as if he were solving a question or two then his eyes stabbed my face i'm no questionable character mr squirrel i said he hid himself altogether i amassed some crusts of bread by his hole and watched humbly for his honourable presence he did not peep out at all the bread was not a worthy invitation i varied it with a fragment of ham mr squirrel wasn't void stomached i thought he needed something to read i tore a poem from the wall i left it by his respectable cavern lo his head sprouted out to pull it in aha even the squirrel is a poetry devotee in this hill i said in humorous mood eighteenth most beloved mamma was flogged with a bamboo rod some hundred times when she was a girl her exchanging of a word with a boy over the fence being deemed an obscenity my papa spent his lonely days in a room with confucius till one night a middleman left him with my mamma as with a dolly i do believe they never wrote any love letter what would they say i wonder if they knew that their daughter had taken to love letter writing as a profession in america you shouldn't censure my penury in writing knowing that i am a musumi from such a source oscar are your windows clean every window of my willow cottage was washed yesterday is there anything more happy to see your beautiful eyes accepted than a shiny window i pressed my cheek to the window mirthfully when mr poet tried to pinch it from the outside my dearest if he had been my very mr ellis i made a discovery while i was tripping about the kitchen can you guess what it was love letter writer gift from heaven i said trusting it would help me in my composition i lit a candle last night i hid it behind the cover of such a huge bible which i borrowed for the purpose i was heedful of two old men who might disturb me mistaking the light for a sign that something had happened poor mrs heine almost cried she was so pleased to think that i loved the bible do i love it oh ho 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 baka ba kashi how sad the whole bunch of letters wasn't fit for my taste at all at all i'm sorry that i used up two candles that were all we had in this hill so my darling my letter has to be woven from my truest heart good morning my sweet lord how are you have you breakfasted did you eat a beefsteak i dislike a hearty morning eater my ideal man shouldn't be given more than a cup of coffee and one trembling leaf of bacon mr poet kills a frog every morning he says that his fancy springs like a pond singer when he tastes it i should say that his idea bounds too far in his case do you eat frog i beseech you not to incline toward it what should i do if your thought ran off from me failure of my life love is the whole business of woman you know have you any shirt to mend i have been fixing the poets pray express it to me should you ask such a pleasure of any other girl it would be a fatal mistake for you remember oscar that the japanese girl is a mightily jealous thing my sweetheart i dreamed a dream you were a dragonfly while i was a butterfly it is needless to say that we loved one spring day we floated down along the canyon from a mountain a thousand miles afar our path was suddenly barred by a dense bush we couldn't attain to the garden of life without adventuring in it so then you stole in from one place high from another alas we got parted forever 
isn't that a terrible indication do you know any spell to turn it good i'm awfully agitated by it oh kiss kiss me my dear i have to ascertain your love in it your morning glory nineteenth a little chewy chewy was building a nest under the roof by my door dear jovial toiler i must help him in some way i unravelled one of my stockings hoping it might be serviceable in bettering his home i stood me on a chair raising up my arms with my gift the poor sparrow was scared he cast a grey honourableness on my hand oh naughty chewy chewy he winged away twittering chewy 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 twentieth the squirrel by my window shows a great fancy for me he honoured me three times already this morning he bore a somewhat scholarly air a retired professor i reckon is he regular with his diary possibly he is idle with a pen like any other professor let me scribble for him to-day my one bottle of ink has some time to dry up yet i will name it the cave journal i will leave it to the professor for a souvenir upon my soryanava to this hill a where are my spectacles b upon my soul i believe that some mischief is raging i could never trust even the poet abode who stole my two-cent stamp god bless you my precious daughter at sierra nevada by and by i will erect my private telegraph between us see the idea of an idiotic spider tying his net across my front gate however could he be so ambitious as even to incline to arrest me he may very likely be a detective a railroad brigand is hiding in these heights i suppose the world is running worse every day how shocking it was a fundamental error of god to create that adventurous eve the offspring of a crow can't be other than a crow our squirrel history is not blotted by any criminal i feel a bit conceited in speaking about it how can i help it the trouble with god is that he was awfully vain to express his own ability by so many useless things rifle for instance my poor wife d to-day is the anniversary of my beloved she was shot by one two-legged barbarian i appeal to the police american police are rotten through and through the murderer bribed them i fancy i found my wife but she was only a skin how often did i tell her that she was risking too much in sporting around but she didn't mind me insisting that sight-seeing was a better education i carried her skin into my home i cleansed it and altered its form a trifle because it was a lady's i'm still keeping it for church wear i feel dreadful thinking of her e a butterfly passed by my cavern a hundred times each time she threw me a vulgar laugh her face was thickly powdered in yellow does she think herself charming i should say that i would prefer a girl in tights from a saloon stage to her indecency such a flirt i suppose that she wanted me to marry her no am i not old enough to avoid running into such foolishness f rainy day i sat in a memorial corner of my cave with an unfinished novel of my wife's i do judge she had flashes of genius she was so deep like the sky i never suspected that she could gracefully have beaten george eliot if she had only survived poor girl one tenderly loved by god passes away young i've fallen into the habit of crying unmanfully nowadays i cannot help it can i g one thing i must furnish is a bathroom cleanliness is the first rule of heaven i am told i went to the lily pond to take a gracious bath oh such water gammons dirty-handed frogs how could i dip me in that turbid water the frogs ought to go to a reformatory school they have no culture whatsoever h camera hunters are thick as fogs to-day i came near being a victim no sir i can't permit my picture to be seen with those of cheap matinee idols i must keep some dignity americans are too commercial altogether the pictures of our race are in demand i imagine i beautiful moon last night i filled my stomach with the divine water from a creek my face waved in the water i flattered myself that i was a pretty handsome gentleman i sang an ancient chinese song come long to-morrow moon carrying a harp j 
stop your empty noise meadowlarks silence is the first study of this hill and the last don't you know i am absorbed in my grave work the secret of the world k my neighbouring jap girl is rather attractive isn't she i heard a few scratches of her native bubbling the pagan speech is not so bad as i thought l if there is one thing i cannot endure it is ignorance what is the state of your roses old boy the poet heine is utterly alien to rose culture shall i order how to raise roses from a london publisher m i went up the hill to pray to god the higher the nearer when i came back my honourable vestibule was blocked i found by the dirt the poet was ditching close by my residence i couldn't blame his conduct however because no one could see my home i don't hang out a sign like a quack doctor it occurred to me that i would strike into his cottage and snatch the best poems from his drawer and sell them with my name i must secure the international copyright i said but i couldn't dare it my impulse being thwarted i am no wicked reporter don't you see i hid me in his historical iron pot all day in heine was posting around the following card no shooting i venture to say that he is the only one civilized two-legged in the whole world oh where's my napkin chinese laundry isn't punctual in delivery p i think i must learn how to swear for a pastime q my fellow brother mr blank was shot this morning the paper says there is a possibility of war between russia and japan a preacher prophesies the disappearance of the universe everything is precarious in the extreme i will not poke around outside during the day i will loaf in the poet's orchard under the breezy moonlight poetical existence is just enough i will withdraw me to the sanctuary of the muses r heaven be with my soul amen s good-bye my dear old world twenty-first a chinaman passed with a weighty load of washing on his shoulder friend stop a minute take a glass with me before you go the poet rolled out with a claret bottle did you ever see a chinee in love did you ever see one smile mr charlie smiled a serene smile of the flower kingdom pattern god bless the empress dowager mr poet said both raised their wine the load is too heavy for you you are killing yourself i can't bear to see it my friend obey me let me help you don't leave till i come back the poet hurried for his questionable buggy and horse he cracked his whip he never whips the horse but he carries it for fashion's sake as he remarks when mr charlie protested me oh rye you savvy the chinaman was dumbfounded for the poet was unknown to him mr heine pushed him in when he leaped up he noticed his horse in tender tone go on baby what a goody goody his act never parts from poetry however i said i was simply dying for an opportunity to explode my good heart when i invited one tramp to my willow cottage i fed him with one dozen eggs i emptied out all my change for him don't you feel cold lying outdoors i said yes miss don't you need an overcoat yes miss when mr tramp left me with an overcoat in his hand looking like a proud mayor of tokyo my uncle was coming from mrs heine's uncle you do want to be good to a poor man don't you you have made yourself a great philanthropist with your overcoat what have you done i presented it to a tramp morning glory never mind uncle i will buy a swell coat in new york you have some more haven't you it cost me forty yen at hama you really are a foolish girl asago asago is my humble name in japanese then i kissed his hand most pathetically in fun for my part of course End of section 15